My Monday started out how most Mondays start. A little bit wet, full of Ethiopian opals, 1850s technology, and a stranger I'd summoned from the internet. Are you rich? But it didn't start there, it started at 6am, when things were drier. I have exactly three days to go prospect this week, and I need to find three grams of some products up in the old moldy. That means I have to find three grams in three days. At the top it off, one of the days that I've got to do this, I'm racing a storm. I'm meeting a patron today. His name's Cousin Jack, and he's flown all the way over from Cornwall to Australia. We're going to call it the reinvasion. That's a whole other story. Cousin Jack, authentic hat. That's not authentic. That is. <laughs> I have two questions for you, good sir. Where did you get the Vegemite hat? BFG? BC? BCF. BCF. Yeah. Right. How's the heat? It's not bad, actually. It Last night wasn't so good, um, and it all went horribly downhill at five this morning when I went out um, to go for a pee. It's not en suite, and the door slammed behind me. So I was wandering around in Tansvelles, stark bollock naked. Naked, in a pub, in 40 degree heat. Cousin Jack's willy wasn't the only thing on display. He showed me pictures of the gold he's been digging out in his native homeland of Cornwall. Yeah. He likes my mega pan. I love this pan. The last time I was here, I brought out my Frankenbanker and it did not go to plan at all. So this time I've brought out ancient technology that works every time, and that is the rocker box. Oh, I found a gift. It's a piece of Australian earthenware from the Gold Rush. Really? Yeah, found on the gravel bar. How about that? I'm using my bush-made mesh screen to classify dirt down into my buddings buckets. Hat off! GoPro on! Don't I just look like a good technocrat? Um, his first Australian gold. Here we go. This is my first Australian gold. First pan. I can see a speck already. So Reedy Creek Tin likes to move if you shake it. Like that? Yep, and then tap. And then tap. Yep, there you go. There we go. There's the golden smile. He's got it. He's got it. Look at that. Not bad for the first pan in Australia. My first Australian pan. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're going to be a multi-dollar air by the end of today. I'm 11,175 miles from home. My pay dirt that I worked last time came from in the stream here. What I want to do is start attacking the edge of this bank because the gold in here is just as good, even though I covered it up with a slurry to hide it from the shovel doggers. This is going to be fun. Oh, it'll work, don't you worry. We gotta get some momentum up first. Trust the chaotic process. <laughs> Obviously running wet pay dirt like this is uh, fraught with some difficulty. All right, so this will still work. It's just gonna be a little bit of a, I'm gonna have to do it twice. Yeah. And I'll get a pile of pay dirt behind that screen before we move the buckets off. So, Okay, it is working quite well, actually. I've got most of the rocks reasonably clean and a nice pile of classified pay dirt back here. This will run through the rocker box really nice. However, my coarse tailings are gonna fall back in on top of my workings. And we don't want that, do we? So we're going to build a little frame and move this set up just off to the side here. Now I need fork sticks. It's like a prospector's rock problem. Where to get fork sticks in all this wood? You know, this might work. I'm gonna get this in here. Back to shoveling. It even stood up. So far, so good. We're two for two. Even though that rocker box has a classifying plate on it, I'm classifying again. And the reason for that is transporting raw dirt to that rocker box is a waste of time. I'm better off spending a little bit of time, it only takes me a few minutes to fill one of these buckets with quarter inch classified dirt, and I'll get four times the amount of pay dirt in it as I would if I took raw dirt to that rocker box. So now, every single one of these buckets is technically at least two buckets worth of pay dirt. That's what we call some dodgy Australian bush math. The question was, is there a gold in the clay that I gave you? There is. Yay! It's just from a handful of dirt. 
Yep. Given that that was probably maybe a tenth of a pan in volume, that's pretty good stuff. Either I'm getting older or these buckets are getting heavier. Oh, oh, yeah. The way a rocker box is really simple, we have a hopper here that you load your pay dirt into. We then grab a ladle on a stick and pour water over the dirt we put in the hopper. That pushes the dirt and gold through what is called an apron. That's our first gold catching system before the rest of the slurry drops down the bottom there into an impromptu sluice run that catches the remainder of the gold. A vigorous rocking action like this helps settle all the gold into the mat just like you would with a pan. And at the end of the day, you got golds. You always have to work out a little bit of a system when it comes to utilizing a rocker box. So I had to rearrange things a little bit, but now I've got my system in place. We are good to go. We've got our first bucket down and about a five minute run, which is pretty good. Five minutes for what is the equivalent of about well, eight pans or so worth of dirt is fast and a lot less energy expenditure as well. Now, with a rocker box, you gotta not think of this as a sluice box, because it's not. It's essentially an automatic pan. The rocking action is what settles the gold into your capture zones, just like the shaking of a pan does. And that shaking action is gonna get the gold down the bottom no matter what, so you don't have to worry too much about the angle of your rocker box or how much you're feeding it and all of that sort of jazz. It works very differently to a sluice, even though it looks like one. And this is why we classify because we can process so much more dirt. Two buckets down and we have a lot of black sand in the mat, which is exactly what I would expect from this spot. You gotta love that Reedy Creek tin, mostly because it has gold and gemstones in it. More buckets. If we get a bit of sunshine, I'll show you them in the sunshine. <laughs> There are subscribers of mine that are going to absolutely flip when they see that. Ethiopian opals. They look unreal, man. Wait until you see them in the sunshine. That's just nothing. The problem is... We ain't going to get no sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who know, I am colorblind. And this is an app that demonstrates what my vision looks like. So this is what I see on this side. And this is what normal color vision looks like. I don't particularly enjoy opals as much as most people. So we're just going to... Let's go test this out. I don't see a difference between the pictures, so do you see a difference between the pictures? Well, my hand looks pretty scary, that's for sure. Yeah, people to me look dead, apparently. That's what I've been yeah. told. Yeah, and, and yes, there is a huge difference. There is a massive difference in the two. opals. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, that's probably the reason why I don't enjoy opals as much as I enjoy yeah. things like amethyst. <laughs> yeah. So much of prospecting is just repeating the same actions. I've classified more dirt. You didn't really need to see that, did you? I hope you didn't. If you did need that for some kind of, you know, soul quenching reason, stay tuned. There'll probably be more later. Trying to obtain large amounts of gold relies on one thing alone, and that is moving quality pay dirt. Modern reinventions of the old sluice box, such as high bankers, trommels, and even dredges, have made gold prospecting incredibly efficient. However, it's my strong belief now after using a rocker box for several years that the old time technology has something going for it. Its simple design allows for very quick fixing in the bush, easy modification, and I found the capture rate to be exceptional once you know what you're doing. In fact, this little unit alone with its single piece of carpet catches as much gold as what most of my sluice boxes do. The man said gold, I'm coming! I told him to unleash his inner prospector and he said there's a lot of gold. Oh, there's not a bad pan, eh? Oh my word. That is superb. And what um, I'm finding is that lots of tapping while you're doing that seems to clear the sand out of the, the black sand out of the gold. Too. Now you're giving away all the secrets of how to do my pay dirt. There we go. Normally it keeps people busy for hours, but if you're going to give away <laughs> that kind of industry secret, that's a good pan, man. That's a very good, good pan. I wash my dirt with a ladle on a stick. I'm going to lie, three grams of gold in three days is going to be a little bit of a challenge, especially considering I'm using primitive technology, but I think 
think it's doable in this spot. I know that the rocker box is actually very efficient at catching gold now that I've worked out how to use it correctly. And so I think I'm in with a good chance. The last time I took a rocker box out to a spot like this, I netted over two grams uh, and I did five 40 liter buckets. All right, all right, stop yelling at me. I know you want to see me classifying dirt. Actually, could I just, could I just do that? Because that would work, that would work so well. <gasps> Maybe if I give it like one little stick support. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now we're classifying with intelligence. Do your thing. That one, as we say in Cornwall, oh, you got me. <laughs> you got him. You, you, what, you got him? Got him. Got him. Means you got him, oh. but the him is pronounced, it is reduced to just an N. Oh, you got him. You got him. Yeah, oh, so him. you speak Australian. We shorten everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's not called the Melbourne Cricket Ground, it's called the MCG. It's not called the MCG, it's called the G. The G. Yeah. Right, okay, fair enough. <laughs> The flood depth on Reedy Creek reaches somewhere around 20 to 25 feet depending on how much water comes down and how quickly it flash floods because there is a lot of different creeks that enter into this system. And that right there is the weather system that's coming across Victoria right now. We are in a little gap. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit more than a sprinkle. Yeah. Yeah. Time, for, time to head for the hills, uh, chaps. Yeah, well, no. Out of the hills. Before we get washed away, let us just pack some stuff up, get my bush classifier and make sure we put some gold back in the creek for the gold gods. Shiny is new. Two buckets of the good stuff. Not bad considering we didn't get a full day in before this storm comes through and makes everything very moist. I'm not worried about a little bit of rain. Lord knows I've seen my fair share doing prospecting, it's part of it. That's not the danger here. Flash floods in Reedy Creek are deadly, especially when you've got a foreign guest out with you. The last thing I want to do is happen to be making a horrible phone call because the water got too much too quickly. Nonetheless, it's still like a million degrees out here. It's humid as. So the rain is somewhat nice. Lushek! And so there I was, racing yet another storm, three years in a row, cutting my day slightly short and hoping that I'd recovered some gold. You can't travel halfway across the world and not run a rocker box. Two of these? Um, yeah, about two. That's, that's perfect. You want it basically level with the lip. Yep, that's exactly what we want. This is the, this is the uncoordinated part. You gotta pour and rock at the same time. A vigorous shake with yep. your left hand so it feels like someone else's. Keep pouring, it. pour faster, 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 faster. Yeah, more water, more water, heaps of water. Yep, they need another scoop. Is that it? Yep, that's it. And you keep going. So, when I first saw you using this in one of your uh, one of your um, YouTube things. Um, I thought, well, yeah, that's very quaint, recreating, you know, how it used to be and what the old timers did. But of course, now I've used it, I've realized it's absolutely fit for purpose. And there's no surprise that the old timers used rocker boxes because they bloody well work. I declare all of the buckets done. I did uh, four? Did I do four runs? I think I did four runs, which is not too bad. That's like a, some, some leaderage. I don't know if this is going to show up on the GoPro, but there is a nice little flake of gold sitting just down here in the mat. This apron has been fantastic for catching most of my gold, but because of the storm and because of the cleanup involved in doing that amount of black sand, I'm going to take this home and do the cleanup there. 
So before this storm properly sets in, I gotta get all this stuff back to the car and out of the rain. And man, did it rain. But first, we have been panning here for about three hours. This is everything you've collected in that three hours. Um, and a lot of that three hours has been talking. Oh. And playing with the rocker box. Exactly and... the right amount of talking though. Yes, I would totally <laughs> agree with that. I'll show you the technique. Okay. You ready? Yeah, yeah. So we shake it all into the corner. Yeah. yeah. We put it down so I can turn it. There we go. <laughs> shake it all into the corner. Yeah. And on one hand, you just shake back. Ah, look at that. And then you'll see the gold. Wow. That's not bad, man. That's not bad. Wow. How many days did you have to do in uh, Cornwall for that? I'd have to do uh, a week to get that. We've <laughs> done it in three hours. Thoroughly soaked, but happy with the effort I was able to put in. It's time to go home, wait for the storm to blow out. The storm has passed. It took two days, the weather cleared up, but the creek is now a little bit higher than it was, and that means accessing the spot that I was at downstream is fraught with a little bit of difficulty. So much of gold prospecting, mining and fossicking is adapting with change. You have to be able to pivot when things go awry. And that neatly leads me to this spot behind me. I found this spot a few months ago and it was pretty good, but I didn't have the need to work it at the time. Since then, a few people have come in and poked around and had a bit of a play. In fact, they've taken out a lot of the pay dirt that I originally found, but they left the spot completely untouched and that's over here. Underneath the sand, and again, sand is the great hider of gold. A lot of people don't dig through it. Sometimes it can be quite deep, but if you dig through it, chances are no one's touched it. Right at the bottom of the sand, way down there, is a small clay layer. And that small clay layer is actually quite rich. We have in here a two shovel test pan. And we're probably talking about 50 good sized flakes of gold. This is comparable to the test pans I was getting downstream with my rocker box the other day. I should be pretty good to use my rocker box in this spot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like downstream, I'm not dealing with massive amounts of clay. That means I don't need to classify. Or transport in buckets. A lot of this is overburden though. I set about removing the sandy overburden, but I'd soon come to eat my words about classification. I decided to shovel off most of the overburden. You can see that there's a lot of sand on top. And then when we get down the bottom here, we actually start getting some pieces of rock. Proper rock is what we're after. So I think getting rid of that top foot is good. You see, without classification, you have to wash rocks. And washing rocks in a rocker box is quite the challenge. Classification speeds the whole process up. It concentrates your pay dirt, making it quicker to get more gold. I'm just spending a little bit of time thinking if it's not worth setting up my classifier because it doesn't seem to be going through as smoothly as I would like. It doesn't take that long to classify. I might just try it. All right, that should work. But the proof is always in the first yeeting of pay dirt. So far, so good. I stole a lot of these ideas of historic photos of old timers using rocker box setups. I've replicated as much as I can in the modern era, and it seems to work quite well for me. Efficiency of action is everything when you can't mechanize what you're doing. And back in the old times, an old mesh screen, something like a bed frame, would be perfect to classify large amounts of pay dirt very quickly. That is a magnificent pile of pay dirt. I mean, just look at the size of it. I'm hoping that I'm not going to have to move this setup. I could just be able to shovel underneath it and put it in the hopper. That'll make this so much easier. I did hit a clay layer down the bottom there. So what I'm going to do is just wash the clay off and see what kind of gold, if any, is sticking to it. Because I know that there's good gold down there, at least in one spot. There is definitely gold on the clay. That's just from a couple of handfuls. So far in my prospecting journey, I've come to love the rocker box, mostly because of its simplicity, as I stated before. I can see some opportunities for modern improvements. A lot of people think of a rocker box as a sluice box, which it's not. That's why I'll never attach a pump to it. 
However, there are ways that I can see on improving a rocker box for modern times. And if you would like to see those videos, consider hitting the subscribe button and turning on all notifications so you don't miss out. First pay dirt pile all run through the rocker. So it was back to classifying. What poor adorable past Chris didn't know was things were about to take an ugly turn. This beautiful piece of jasper just came up on the shovel. Look at that. Nice cream piece of jasper. Oh, I love that. It's fairly common knowledge that the best gold is usually found on the bedrock, or instead of the bedrock, a false bottom, such as a clay layer. But there is also other places that gold tends to collect, and it can mislead you into believing you're in a better spot than you are. This is due to flood layers. Rapidly rising and falling floodwaters deposit gold in a thin layer amongst sand. Sometimes this layer can be one or two feet thick, but more often it's only a few centimeters to a few inches in depth. And the only way to get a lot of gold is to follow the layer horizontally instead of digging down to the bedrock or clay underneath it. I just finished the second lot of classified dirt. Now, by my calculations, that is roughly four to five 20 litre buckets worth of classified pay dirt. And I would like to see how we're tracking for gold. So I've just cleaned out the apron so I can have a quick look. There is nowhere near as much black sand in this as what there was downstream. That's a nice big flake there though. Um, hmm. We got that nice flake, but that's about the same amount of gold I got in my first test pan. Well, now curiosity's got me, so we're gonna pull this. This is the exact reason why I encourage all stream prospectors to do regular test panning. It will reveal a lot more than what you would think. It's not just about how much gold is in the ground that you think you're working, it also dictates and shows you where the gold is going so that you can work it properly. Remember I said most of the gold gets caught up in here and that is usually a secondary catch system and the results reflect that. That's the entire clean out. That is not very good at all. Don't get me wrong, gold is gold. There's probably maybe a 0.1. After a lot of test panning, I've worked it out. To save you listening to past Chris explain what I just explained, it was a very thin layer spread out over a vast area and it wasn't deep. Therefore, I only got a little gold. I just had one of those idiotic epiphanies. I can use my classifier base as like a cradle to hold all of it. So in theory, I should just be able to pick this all up in one go. Ah! <laughs> Victory is mine! The whole reason I'm not rocker boxing downstream is because I currently have a foot injury and I can't get it wet. And because the water's come up from the storms, transporting the dirt back and forth is pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to get my feet wet. But I might be able to pan it. I've now done three sessions in this spot and I've pretty well worked all of this edge all through here down in this area. There's still gold here and it's still very consistent. Like we're talking anywhere between 10 and 30 specks of pan. But now most of my premium pay dirt is here behind me. You can tell because we get a lot more little gemstones. So we've got a piece of tourmaline there and a tin crystal. And most importantly for today, the gold is more like this. We're talking 50 plus pieces of pan. If you've seen any of my videos over the years, you'll know what happened here. I went to work, I started panning as much as I could from the areas that produced the most gold until I couldn't find anything that was giving me decent enough gold worth continuing for. And in the end, I had some really solid little pans. In fact, that saved pretty much my whole day. This just came up on the shovel. It vaguely looks like conglomerate full of ironstone, but at the same time, it also like it doesn't look like a water, it's kind of melted and bubbly up here. And I can see like volcanic bubbles, like those little tiny air pockets you would get. I wonder if that is part of, I don't know, like some kimberlite or what that is. If you have any idea, let me know because that's interesting. My day wasn't totally wasted. Panning turned out to be a good idea because I did manage to net some decent gold. Certainly no bonanza, but look, at the end of the day, I'm getting okay gold for putting in not that many hours, 
and not that much work, but does leave me in a bit of a pickle. I got a lot of gold to find on the last day. So I had tossed and turned in bed that night, and then I had an idea. Most of my good ideas are formulated on the toilet, but given this one was done in bed, perhaps it was going to be a better idea. <sighs> I have a problem. And the problem's pretty simple to understand. I thought I was going to get more gold. I honestly did. I thought I was going to get more gold from that spot using my rocket box. And it just didn't work out that way. And that's prospecting. Sometimes the pay streaks are a lot smaller than what we think. So I'm throwing a Hail Mary here to try and get my three grams. This is a bucket of ore I mined over two years ago. When we found this vein, it was shedding a lot of gold. One of these buckets would give me about four grams of gold. But ore is sort of like stream prospecting. You can have really rich sections and little pockets of great gold and then it can disappear to almost nothing within just a couple of centimeters. So I don't know how much I'm gonna get out of this. I just know that when I did mine this originally, there was a lot in it. Whether or not there is from this particular section of the vein, I don't know. This is my Keen RC1 rock crusher. It's powered by a lawnmower engine. Inside this lawnmower engine is a prop shaft that comes down into this section here. You can see that drive shaft there. And what that does is spin around real fast to a tube where when you tip your ore down the bottom here, it flings that ore out of that tube and into the wall here. And this wall is surrounded by steel baffles. So on impact, it explodes and then ends up in our little collection vessel down here. Today, I'm gonna to be running water in it to suppress the dust. Unfortunately, it can't take big rocks like this. So I have to separate them out. Unlike sluicing or panning, the high-end hard rock gold mining equipment is really expensive. And that means that a lot of the gear that I have access to financially is on the smaller side, making it tedious to process any volume of ore. Time that just about perfect. It's right below that valve, and we got an okay crush out of it. Typically speaking, the gold that comes out of this ore is locked up alongside the iron content held within the quartz, so this darker staining in here. And it's really fine. It's not coarse, chunky gold. Occasionally you get a little picker. And that means I've got to classify this down because any of the large chunks of rock that will still be left in here could contain some of that fine gold. So we have to put it through a classifier so I can re-crush the oversize. As you can see, the volume of oversized material is quite large on the first pass. Second pass usually gets most of this gone and I'm not gonna to be too fussed about getting it down too much smaller than the second pass. Whereas the material in here is what we're after. That is pretty good for using amateur hobby equipment. And as with everything, it was rinse and repeat. In the end, I crushed around a 20 litre parcel of ore. <laughs> 20 litres of ore is a fair amount of rock to crush as an amateur hard rock miner. But historically, I knew that this ore would pay out. I just didn't know exactly how much. 99.999% of all quartz contains no gold, even in a gold mine. And that means that when you introduce it to a crusher like this, because it's so hard, it's very brittle and it will just explode. That means that if you run a piece of rock through that crusher, or any crusher for that matter, and the rock holds together, there's something not brittle in it. That could be sulfides, such as iron. So the iron metallic content of that rock is holding it together. But in this case, I can see gold. And there is gold right at the tip of my thumb in the center of that silver mass. So that is a beautiful little specimen. It actually has a fair bit of weight. There's a real nice piece of gold sticking out right there. Holy crap. That's wicked. This is that rich ore I was telling you about. It's in there. I sat here, I thought, I pondered, I considered all the pros and cons of dragging my sluice box out, setting it all up, doing all that. 
And then I realized something, and that's something that I had forgotten because I haven't sluiced gold ore in a little while, and that is that gold ore is finicky to sluice. I'm better off hand panning this for this quantity. It's not that much, probably take me half an hour or so to pan it down. All of this has been classified. This has gone through its second pass, but I'm not going to do it again because this is where all of my nuggets will be. Processing gold ore is just like panning in the creek. The only difference is you don't have anywhere near as many march flies trying to suck your blood out. And it very quickly became obvious that there was plenty of gold left within this hard rock ore, including a couple of little pickers that just made my whole day worth it. <laughs> I, I just had to stop the time lapse because this, we got a bit. Gold out of hard rock like this typically is a lot brighter than gold you would get out of a creek. Look at the size of that little piece. Like for my area, that's a nugget. And it's so much brighter than what you get when you're panning in a creek and you get the same size bit. That is super freaking cool. And that wasn't all. Plenty of gold came out in every single pan. In fact, I didn't have a single dud the whole time. And given that we are dealing with hard rock gold at the moment, there are a lot of specimens. Now beyond that, all that really fine gold is the same as the big stuff. It's got those little sailboats attached to it. And even that likes to float out of your sluice box. So it's very difficult to capture using a sluice system. Even though this is good gold, it's still not what it was. When we first found the vein, the richest section that popped out was giving us about half a gram in a 10 inch pan from a single pass rough crush. It's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for what it was back in the day. Maybe, maybe at the bottom of the bucket, I don't know. After 45 minutes of panning, it was finally time to see just how much gold I collected and if I would be able to make my three gram gold. At the end of the day, this is what we got for about three quarters of a 20 liter bucket processed out of that ore. That is not too shabby. That picker is gonna go a long way to helping the weight total. I would guess that we've probably got a little over half a gram of gold there. But there was only one surefire way of figuring that out, and that was getting the gold on the scales. Now, however, we've got to decide what we're going to do with this beautiful piece of specimen ore. This is extraordinarily rare for me to be able to visibly see the gold in the ore itself. I've got it all through this side. So I'm actually gonna put this up on my website right now. It'll be up on my website before this video even drops. So if you get it, congratulations. It's gonna have a pretty hefty price tag on it because this piece of geology is quite rare for my area. In fact, you can't even go and mine in this spot now because there is a lease over the area. That means this is your only opportunity to get your hands on a piece like this. Day one's gold, even though we didn't have that many hours on the creek, everything went according to plan, and we actually got a reasonable take for the amount of dirt that I moved. Day two's gold, everything went to hell, and I didn't get anywhere near the amount of soil I needed to work done. So it's reflected in the results here. Fast forward to today, and I think we had a relatively respectable amount of gold recovered from our hard rock. But honestly, there's only one way to find out. I'm not gonna weigh this all up separately. I know this ore is going about $11,000 a ton or about four ounces per ton. So we're gonna mix it all together. That is a pretty good looking pan. I don't think that's gonna be three grams, but we might get half of it, 1.5. I know a lot of people are gonna be asking what this is at the front is a darker color there and that's the sulfide starting to rust around the gold so most of that is gold it's just covered in a metallic sulfide all right i'm hoping for 1.5 maybe two actually looking at that line all right we're over the one Ooh, actually we did all right 2.1 if i had managed a proper full day the other day instead of being caught out by that rain i reckon we would have got our three. That makes that gold worth around 200 Australian dollars, which is not too bad. I was hoping for that three grams for my project. We'll get it this week.